they're calling you a snitch on here. Muzza, do I give a flat? Just the fact that you're repeating that word upon here gets you barred, kid. You know, why do you want to come on and start chatting? You got a profile picture like a respectable adult, like a respectable father of a family and nice girlfriend and all that, when really you're just a fan, yeah? You're all caught up on the word snitch. Who did a snitch on, lad? Anyone doing life for me? I do 18 years straight for someone else. Did any of my codees get put in prison with me or did every single one of them walk? And there was four of them, plus a snitch called Anti Christian. So don't get it twisted, lad. I sit here and label you as absolute scumbags. That's why I get called a snitch, lad. I'm not scared of the so-called Liverpool Mafia. I don't do the R or how powerful they think they are. I will not sit back and let them absolutely destroy the infrastructure of our city of Liverpool and damage the environments and the communities to support their own dirty, horrible, spoiled families. I want to make sure Liverpool regains its strength instead of loses it all again. I don't give a shit these circles of dealers, these circles of gangs, these people who fly around in the fast cars with the nice watches, battering the birds and banging the birds, mate. And if I can stand till the day I'm dead, raising this issue about my city, I don't give a call me what they want. I get called nonsense, I get called grasses, I get called, I get called every name under the sun. But I stand by this thing that I've lived with all my life and it's helped me right through my life. And it's simple, sticks and stones may break these bones, but names will never hurt me, so don't ever get that twisted. I'm here raising awareness so that it's going to affect your children. You might be 20 now, haven't even got a kid. Trust me, if you're a straight member, you're going to have a kid. And when you've got a kid, you won't want your kid growing up in that environment you've grew up in, will you? That's what it's about. You'll only start learning your lessons when you reproduce a child, won't you? Hey, you silly little scumbag. And when you get here, you've got dickheads bigging up such racist individuals upon my life. You just get yourself barred, kid. You don't come in here big and racist up who's been trying to divide the country for the past 20 years. And now he knows you're not getting nowhere. He's just trying to like, you know, get inside and divide, divide and conquer. Free the Encro boys, say Sir Ron John. You need to sit with them, lad. Hey, all these dickheads thinking he were never getting caught. All in Bellens, never done a day in a police cell. All of a sudden he'd become big time gangsters, shifting parcels all over the city. Do you understand what I'm saying? Never mind the young girl down the bottom of your road that's got the coke addiction. Never mind she's going to be on the crack by the time she's 21. Never mind she'll be probably on the game already. Yeah, never mind that. They are women. They're the girls that are going to reproduce the next generation of scousers. And I don't want all our women ending up with addictions, producing children who have already got addictions. I want Liverpool to be strong from the foundation up, not from the council down. Do you understand what I'm saying, Tiz? And if you don't like what I'm saying, I don't give two. If you're not relating to what I'm saying that is happening within our communities, not just Liverpool, everywhere, Manchester, Glasgow, Ireland, it doesn't matter. Look around yourself and look at the, de the deterioration in the last 20 years. Look at the deterioration of it. Look, all the real people that love the communities get moved out. Why? Because they raised their voices to the concerns in the early days. They get labelled snitches because they're not happy with a car being burnt out on the path that's not theirs. They get labelled snitches because their house is being shot up and they ring police. But the snitches, yeah, these are all on an ideology that the government has instilled in use. Everyone's calling everyone a snitch. Have you not noticed? The ones that aren't getting called a snitch are the ones that are snitching. Isn't that strange? How can Darren be a grass when he's done it? Ignore it, Hugh Butler. So what? You want to call me a grass? Prove it. You want to call me a grass? Show me some paperwork of something. You know, clarify something. Don't start. I'm not asked. I'm not asked. Want to call me a grass? Call me a grass. Take it on. Again. No one sat in jail because of my fault. 
Do you understand that? Anyone that sat in jail proclaiming it's because of my fault. No, I never went out and killed an 18 year old kid. I never went onto the streets of Liverpool and shot dead a 30 and 18 year old kid as a 43 year old man. Because that's what happened. That's who's calling me a snitch. You've got someone called William Moore, John Moore, Natalie Moore, Kirsty Moore. It's the Moore family from Liverpool being distributing drugs for the past 60 years from the granddad down. Years ago when I was out making a living, I met this Willie Moore through another fella called Tommy Gilday. Tommy Gilday cut him off because Willie Moore was a snitch and a wrong one. Years later, he's gone to jail for 12 years. This is in the 90s for taking 15 kilograms of brown to Birmingham to destroy their communities, to wreck their communities. Don't get it twisted. I had things locked off in Anfield, L5, L3, L4. Most of Liverpool was blocked off by me and my people. Don't let anyone tell you a difference, okay? No one could come to our estate, the Grisdale estate, and they would not leave without an injury. That's how it was back in the day. I don't condone my actions back then, and that's why I sit here trying to promote this message and encourage you to this life off I'm about to start speaking about. So let's look back to 2000s, yeah? Let's go back to 2000s. Let's give you a bit of history. Half of don't even know me. Half of get on the high feed and then go to when people start saying I'm a gangster or a miss. I'm not a gangster. Never have been a gangster. I've never been a head honcho. I've always been in control of my own thing. And anyone that jumped on my thing was controlled by my guidelines. It's the same as business. Do you understand what I'm saying? So 2000s. We're just a little group of kids. We're burglars. We burgle commercial properties. So let's go to 97, 98, 99 and onwards. I'm in jail for my first sentence at the age of 14. I get 15 months detained. I've, before I got me 15 months detained, I'm in the care system. I'm getting dragged through the care system. At 14, I get 15 months detained. If you don't know what the detain means, it means you do the full, the full 15 months. I got that for a section 20 on a 20 year old lad who's come looking for me. I've hit him with a bottle and got 15 months for it. Yeah, I've gone into jail, I've come out of jail. When I've got out of jail as a youth, I've started participating in crime. Started needing money to buy me own clothes. I never had parents that were buying me Christmas clothes. I never had parents that was rigging me out for Easter, like the majority of yous have got, and yous are jeopardising like dickheads. I never had parents that were taking an active role in my life. The only time my parents would take an active role in my life is when we're getting beaten up or locked in a room. So that was my first sentence, 15 months detained. I was 14 years of age. I was in custody till, a, till nearly 16. I get out, I'm left to my own devices as always. I'm screeching around the estates. I'm robbing off licenses. Do you know what an off licenses is? Years ago, you used to have threshes off licenses. And in them threshes off licenses, when we were young, you could buy, you could buy electricity cards. Now when you buy electricity cards, you've got to have a little plastic card, you swipe it and it goes on your machine. Years ago, you could just go in with a £5 note, £10 note or whatever and buy a lucky card by itself, take it away and slot it in your machine. So we used to target the threshers for the cigarettes, the spirits and the electricity cards. And we were smashing it. We didn't need to sell drugs like all the other fucking dickheads. But we were getting too much jail. We'd get put on remand and found not guilty, or we'd get put on remand and released without charge because we're getting arrested for all these attempted burglaries or conspiracy to burgle. Do you understand what I mean? It didn't make sense to me making nice money, going to jail, spending it, getting out skint, making nice money off another move, going to jail, bang, bang, bang. It didn't make sense to me. So I've had to start participating in an easy way of making money. Now, because of the rats in our area at that time, let's call them the Snarlies. You should all know who I'm referring to. Because I was around a fella called Tommy Gilday years before, the Farleys had a problem with Tommy Gilday. So when Tommy Gilday passed away, rest in peace, Tommy Gilday, when he, when he passed away and I've been let out, 
I'm hated by the group that's got the area now. Tommy Gilday had the city blocked off. He's passed away. There's been a power struggle. The Farleys have got L5 and L4 locked off. We're the youngsters. They're the oldest. Yeah? They didn't like us. So we couldn't go and get swag off them. We couldn't go and be a part of that group because they didn't like us because of affiliation to another group in the city. Do you understand? Are you still with me? Are you still on it? Yeah? So from there, we couldn't get a parcel. We couldn't get no swag. They wouldn't give us. So what we had to do, what we had to start doing was tying their grafters up and they didn't like it. So me and a couple of our boys, 23, 21, got a little kit together and went out wrapping drug dealers up. And the majority of the drug dealers we wrapped up was grafting for the Farleys, for all them little dickheads. They hated us even more now, chasing us down, trying to kidnap us, trying to harm us. We kidnapped about five different dealers, left them in a mess, and they're still traumatic to this day and hating on us for what we done back in the day. And I don't blame them. But we had to rob these dealers, and every time we robbed the dealers, we sold their swag to an, a mate of theirs who was another dealer. So by the time we robbed everyone, there's no one else to rob other than the individual that has been buying all the other victims swag. And his name was Carl Freeman. So this Carl Freeman on the sly, when we're kidnapping A, B, C, D and taking everything off them, Carl Freeman on the sly behind his mate's back, known as mate's being kidnapped, known as mate's swag's being... He's buying the swag and shifting it outside Brighton, putting it down Brighton, selling it in Brighton. So there's no more victims to cough for around our estate, so we thought, yeah, we'll get Carl Freeman. So we went and got Carl Freeman. And it was an easy, we didn't even have to hit him because he knew. Just wrapped him up, <laughs> went to his house on City Road. There was about... A hundred CD racks, and in every DVD, and in every DVD cover, you had a little three hundred quid. So we just rinsed them, took all the swag, what he'd reinvested, just rinsed them, and that was my life. That's how I fell in to organised crime.